This show was created with the sole purpose of being able to inspire other people and to be able to give back. Good morning, everyone. I've got a rant this morning, and this has been on my mind for probably the last three to four weeks, pretty heavily. And um, it honestly, it, it came to point two days ago. I'm in um, Scottsdale, Arizona. I'm having dinner with a really good friend of mine, close friend of mine, most of you guys know, Andy Frisilla. And we're having dinner and we're talking about customer experience. And as you guys know, and anybody that follows First Form and Andy knows that these guys are some of the best in the entire world at customer experience, that customer satisfaction. When you get a package from First Form, it's got, it's got handwritten notes that are signed um, by employees of that company that, by the way, are very like personal. Most of them, they're, they're looking up your social media accounts, they're commenting on your kids, they're doing things that are just absolutely changing the customer experience for people. And there's business owners like him and like me and like many others that for 10 years have crafted and trained and driven home to all their employees how important that customer experience is. Because every single person in every business right now wants all of their products and their services to feel experiential. And the only way that you do that is with incredible customer experience. Now, let me dive into the meat and potatoes of what our conversation was about and what's been really heavy on my mind is since COVID, right? I'm just gonna be super like open and, and, and just wing this, but I'm just gonna tell you, one of the things that's been so disappointing to me is that no matter what you believe about COVID, about you know, the, the, the policies or the politics that are involved in it, let's just put all that aside for a second and just look at the businesses. Small businesses have suffered tremendously from, from COVID. Um, some from you know, the health uh, concerns and scares, a lot because of the restrictions and the mandates and um, the government control, the, uh, the shutdowns. And the fact is, is that I'm not blaming business owners per se, but I'll get back to why I think this is so important for them to understand. These business owners, most of these small business owners, they've been so tested and, and they're just barely hanging on. I mean, tons of them have already gone out of business, but the ones that are hanging on, you know, they've had some PPP money, they've been able to use up savings, they've been able to, whatever they've had to do, they're just surviving in hopes that they can get back to thriving. It's been super hard for business owners to be able to keep their businesses afloat never mind actually accelerate the growth. And so this is why this has been such a, a heavy item on me is because since this has all happened, these business owners have been so scared. They've, been, they've had the government up, the, up their ass. They've, they've had them coming down on them saying, essentially, you can only do this. You can only have so many people. You have to wear masks. Your employees have to wear masks. You've got government agencies. You've got health departments. You've got OSHA telling all these business owners how they have to operate within this little box. And I know it's difficult for those business owners to try to balance those, those operations according to how they're being told how to do it and still provide the customer experience. But let me tell you this, because you're just trying to survive and you're taking orders from all these agencies and these, and these people that, by the way, don't have your best interest at heart, they are not giving you advice on how best to stay alive, to stay in business, to feed your family, to feed your kids. None of them care about that. They all have jobs, they're checking their boxes and they're doing what they're told to be, they're supposed to be doing. But that is not what's best for you as a business owner. And so what, what, what happens is you say, okay, I better do what they say. And now you're taking minimum wage employees, most of you, minimum wage employees or low level earning employees, a lot of which are teenagers or young adults, and they are literally just doing exactly what you tell them to do. So now as a business owner, 
you're afraid because the government told you that everybody has to wear masks. So you tell everybody they have to wear masks, right? Well, takes away from a little bit of the experience, especially if you're in the food and beverage industry. As a server, most of the waiters, waitresses, they have a hard time communicating. You'll see them all the time pulling their mask down to be, actually be able to speak, and now they're like touching their face. And you know, we've all, we've all heard these issues, but the experience from customer to employee, it's, it definitely is a downgrade. On top of that, now some of you are even taking it a step further. You're actually telling your employees to not serve others unless they have a mask on. Now, I don't care which side of the political masking you're, 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 you want to side with, but let's go to business for a second. You have potential risk as a business owner if you don't tell your employees to wear masks. I get that. Check the box. Do it if you want to do it. I'll fight it, but you can do it. That's fine. However, you don't have any responsibility to enforce that your customers coming into your business are wearing masks. If you put a sign on the front of your door, if you live in a, in a state or, or, or reside in, in, a, in a state of business where they require you to have those policies or those signs on the door, then do it. Now your ass is covered, right? You have no liability from that point. There is no government agency or any uh, enforcement agencies that are going to shut you down or fine you or put you out of business if you don't act like Gestapo, if you don't act like enforcement or police, mask police. There is no part of your business description that says that anybody that comes into your store, you should turn them away or enforce that they wear a mask. Now, it doesn't matter where you stand politically. Why would you do that? Think about it for a second. There's no chance you're going to get a fine. There's no chance you're going to get shut down for that. Now, could people make, oh, could they make a complaint? Absolutely. Oh, there was people, customers in your store, in your restaurant, in your bar that weren't wearing masks. Okay, if that goes to the health department, that goes anywhere, they're going to inquire about it but they sure as hell aren't going to do anything about it, especially when you say, hey, look, we had it posted that they were required. We reminded the guest to please wear one. After that, there's nothing else you should do. There's nothing else anybody can do. But I'll tell you what you're doing wrong if you're do going above and beyond. Not only are you killing the entire customer experience for that person, like myself, that doesn't want to wear a mask, I will never come back to your business again. When COVID's done, COVID's gone, I will remember the experience that I had in your business with your 16-year-old employee that refused me service, refused my dollars so that he could be compliant or he could do what he was told. Or in the case of some of these Starbucks videos, literally just on a power trip trying to tell people that they needed to wear a mask to be able to take their coffee and they were willing to hand them a mask, but they weren't willing to hand them their coffee. All logic out the fucking window, okay? Because now we've got business owners telling their employees to refuse people service if they're not wearing a mask. Now, we, we don't even have to get into the science, the numbers, the data. People go back and forth on that all day. Throw it out the window. If you're a business owner and you're struggling to survive, you want revenue, you have restrictions on capacity, you're having a hard time driving people to your store because of COVID, you live in California where it's just fighting tooth and nail to, to stay alive, but you're telling your employees that they should refuse people service if they don't wear a mask, then you deserve to be out of business because you're ruining the, the experience for everyone. And quite frankly, people like me, and by the way, there's lots of them. They're not as loud as me. They won't make these videos, but I'm telling you right now, they will vote with their dollars. They will not come back to your business ever again. They will tell people about the terrible experience they had. And here's what's crazy is you guys think, you business owners think that the tides are going to turn. Now all of a sudden the mask mandate's over and you're going to be able to get all those people back. You'll be able to just have this normal experience again to provide great customer service. Not a chance, man. That shit is not going to happen. And I'll tell you why. Sure, you can take your mask signs down. Sure, you'll be able to tell your employees 
You know, hey guys, we don't require them anymore. But do you know how long it takes to teach and train people with the highest level of customer service? People have spent millions, millions and millions of dollars. Companies have spent billions of dollars in training programs to be able to get their employees to be able to give people that level of customer service. And literally within months, many of you business owners have just cut the legs out from underneath those incredible programs and those years of training. Because now what you've done is you've empowered this younger generation of employees to instead of focusing on the customer, they get to come in and they get to kick their ass out of the store. They get to tell them to go away. They get to refuse them service. They get to argue with the customer over a mask. You think that those employees that are like children, sorry to be condescending, but a lot of them are young. They're young adults. They don't know better. They're doing what they're told. You think that you're gonna be able to empower them with that and then all of a sudden snap your fingers and say, hey, by the way guys, masks are all done now and I need you guys to be incredible customer service representatives. Not a chance. That's not gonna happen. And so for all of you guys that are just trying to stay afloat and stay in business, or if you're trying to thrive, I'm telling you right now, there is a massive opportunity to provide customer service. There always has been. That's why certain businesses like Chick-fil-A, that's why certain businesses like Costco, that's why certain businesses like Amazon, they've done so well because their return policies, their customer service policies, they've gone over and above. Dutch Brothers, have you ever gone to a Dutch Brothers and not had the person that's taking your guys' coffee order be literally the most exciting, happy, positive person in the world? No, because they care about that. That's what sets them apart. That's why their businesses are thriving. But here's where the opportunity lies, where you've got half or more of business owners scared out of their minds, telling their customer, sorry, telling their, their employees to kick customers out or to not take their dollars or refuse them service over not, com not complying to wear a mask in their store. Not only are you, is your good customer service going to stand out, but it's gonna jump over mountains in contrast to that experience. So now, instead of you just kind of being a little bit above the rest, just being like the creme de la creme, now you're gonna be a whole different universe of experience for people because the contrast is gonna be blinding. I have gone into stores right here in my own backyard that I've spent thousands and thousands of dollars in catering, in events, you name it. I'm a loyal customer, as loyal as they get. And I walk in and a 17 year old kid says he won't take my order to get a sandwich when I'm the, I'm the only person in the whole store. I'm in the food and beverage industry. I know there's no way in hell you're paying your bills, meeting your labor and your payroll if you're not doing a couple thousand bucks a day in that brand. And based at, on my experience at lunch with me being the only person in the store and trying to give him a few hundred bucks so I can get sandwiches for my office, but him refusing me service because I wouldn't put a mask on, that company's going out of business. Mark my words, they're going out of business and so will you if you don't quit this bullshit. You, every single business owner listening to this right now, have a meeting with your staff and you tell them this, look, if you wanna wear a mask, great, wear it. If you're afraid to get fined and whatever, then mandate it with your employees but you cannot control your customers. If you're gonna be open for business, then you let your customers come in and you let them act the way they wanna act. Then you don't mandate a mask for your customers. You don't turn away that business or that service or else you're just signing your own death wish. And if you're not willing to do that, then you don't deserve to be in business. That's all there is to it. The fact is, this is gonna get shared and people are gonna comment and there's gonna be a bunch of people that disagree with me, but I don't give a shit. You watch, mark my words, in six months, a year, or two years from now, the companies that are willing to actually step up and still provide that service, despite the fear-mongering that the government and all these agencies are placing on us, they are going to rocket ship because they understand that when it's all said and done and the dust settles, the only people that are mattering to their business and feeding their family are the ones voting with their dollars. The government ain't giving you anything after this is done. 
They're only taking their taxes. And the fact is, is customers are your entire lifeblood. They're everything in your business. And if you can't figure out how to treat them right, somebody else will, I will. And I'll keep opening up brands and I'll take all of those customers and they will, they will get the experience they deserve and they'll keep coming back. And I want you guys to all thrive. But if I go into another store where a 15 or an 18 or a 25 year old person refuses me business when I'm at no health risk to anybody and most of the time there's nobody in the whole fucking store and they refuse me service, won't take my dollars, then that's your fault as a business owner. Get in your stores, train your people. Don't you ever let them do that to people. It's absolute bullshit. And from this point forward, if you guys haven't understood that, then make a point to do it right now. Get with your team, retrain them right now because it's not gonna happen overnight. You have to retrain them. This is the biggest disservice you can do to your entire company right now is giving these young workers empowerment. And, I don't, and when I say young, I don't even mean like young. I mean like anybody in your organization. Quite frankly, if you've given them the power, if you've empowered them to treat a customer that way, then you're in the wrong. And people will suffer. Look, there's a couple businesses that are big enough, they'll get away with it, you know? It's, and it feels wrong, but guess what? Delta, they will treat their customers like shit. They will literally, they went from being stewardess and, and, and these really great customer, uh, customer service people that bring you a drink and smile and make you happy to now literally like teeing off, fighting and kicking people off the planes. And guess what? They're big enough and you know, people say there's no monopoly, but bro, there's, I mean, there's like four or five airlines that do 90% of the flights. They will survive. They will end up being okay despite their stupid CEO that doesn't understand how this works they will lose a lot of business. People like me and others, they'll lose a lot of business, but they'll be okay. But for the rest of you, if you're not a Delta, if you're not an Amazon, if you're not one of these big boys, a Costco, you better rethink your strategy because following suit of those guys, you're not those guys. And you'll never get to be those guys because they built that business on customer service. They just forgot what got them there. So at this point, make, take, a, a mental note and say, am I willing to jeopardize my customers forever, my experience, my perceived experience in my store, or my service forever over some scare tactics? Look, if you have that much of a concern, because people are going to say, well, what about keeping the employees safe? Look, if your employees are concerned about that, one, they're wearing masks, they should be fine, right? If you believe in it. Two, if they're that concerned, tell them to stay home. That's what all people that are concerned should do. They should stay home. There's a lot of people that really are at risk. Look, I'm not pretending this shit doesn't kill people. My dad, my, my own father, if he got COVID right now, he'd for sure be dead like that. He's been quarantined 100%. He doesn't see his kids, his grandkids, anything. Why? Because he would die if he got it. He would also die if he got a variant of other things. But the point is, is that people like that should protect themselves and the rest of the world shouldn't cater to that. Whether you agree or not, it doesn't matter. If you're a business owner and you want to stay in business and you want to thrive and you want to provide a real customer experience going forward, then rethink your strategy and take care of people because that's what your business is about. This show was created with the sole purpose of being able to inspire other people and to be able to give back.